Boink is open source software for volunteer computing. That means using thousands of home computers to tackle large-scale computing problems. Boink is used by many science projects such as Einstein at Home, LASG at Home, and World Community Grid. Anyone can create a new Boink project. If you need lots and lots of computing power and you can't afford to buy it from a cloud provider, you should consider using Boink. The Boink software has two parts. The client is the program that volunteers run on their computers. It runs on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and other platforms. The server is what scientists use to create Boink projects that distribute work to these volunteers. It runs on Linux. In this video, we're showing you how to set up your own Boink server. We assume that you're familiar with using Linux at the command line level. This procedure is also documented on the web. You can find a link to the documentation in the video description. If you have any problems, please let us know by creating an issue on GitHub. We're going to be using Ubuntu 22.04 for this guide. We're using Zubuntu as it has a lower resource requirement than standard Ubuntu, but things should work identically for any other Ubuntu 22.04 variant. You can use other distributions as well, of course, but you may need to make some tweaks to the setup process. Before starting this guide, download VirtualBox, create an Ubuntu 22.04 virtual machine, give it at least 4 gigs of RAM, 1 CPU, and 25 gigs of disk space. When you're prompted to create a user account, give it the username boinkadm and a password of your choice. If you're using an existing server, you'll first need to create the boinkadm login. We'll verify that the boinkadm user has permissions to use sudo to grant super user access. You can do that with sudo su and then add user boinkadm sudo and then add them to the sudo group. Then, log in with su boink admin. Note that if this is the main account in your system, when you open your terminal, you're already automatically logged in as boink ADM. The first thing we'll do is install any security updates the system may need. This will probably take about 10 to 15 minutes. Then, we'll do sudo snap refresh. This snap step is only needed for Ubuntu distributions. Now we'll install some other tools and libraries that Boink depends on. We're going to install a whole list of packages here. You can just copy and paste this entire list into the terminal. It'll install all in one go. Next, we're going to install some Python dependencies that Boink depends on. Now we need to set up the MySQL server. MySQL is a database that Boink uses to store jobs, users, and other information. Run sudo mysql secure installation. This will set up the server security. Set validate passwords to yes. A password strength of zero is fine. Set the password to foobar99. Obviously, on your production server, you want to use a better password than that. But for testing purposes, this will be just fine. Say yes to removing anonymous users, disallow remote root access, and remove the test database. Reload when it's all done. Now that we have the SQL server set up, we need to create an SQL user that the Boink server can use to communicate with the database. So we'll do sudo mysql, and we'll do create user command, and again, replace foobar99 with whatever password you set earlier. Next, we'll grant that user access to the entire database and then we'll use control D to exit my MySQL. Now that we're all set up, we want to make sure that MySQL is working. Log in with the MySQL user using mysql-u, type in the password that you chose, and do show databases. If everything looks good, you can do a control D to exit MySQL. In addition to the database, Boink also depends on the Apache web server. We'll need to make sure that the Boink ADM user can access the Apache web server directory. We also need to enable CGI and restart Apache. To 
verify that Apache is working, we can open up our web browser and go to localhost. Note that you can put in the server's IP address here or localhost. They will both work interchangeably. Of course, for accessing your Boeing server outside of the VM, you'll need to put in the full IP address. Now that we've got all the dependencies figured out, we can go ahead and download the Boeing software. We'll cd to our home directory and run a git clone command to download Boeing. Now that Boink is downloaded, we can move into that directory. We'll run auto setup. And configure. Finally, we'll run make. This will build the Boink software from source. We're just building the server here. We're not going to build the client or the manager. Alright, so we have Boink, we've built the software, and we've installed the dependencies. Now, we get to make a Boink project. CD into the Boink tools directory run make project and again replace your database password with the one that you chose earlier. I say yes I'm prompted. This will create the database name test and will create a tree of files for your project called your project directory. Pretty much everything we're going to be doing from here on out is going to be in this project directory. It comes with a test readme. You can look at it. You don't need to worry too much about what's in there right now, because we're going to go through all those steps individually, but it's good to know that it's here for reference in the future. To get Apache to serve Boeing's web pages, we need to change the Apache configuration. We also need to create a cron entry to run some periodic maintenance tasks. You'll be prompted to choose a text editor. You can use whichever you like. I'm going to be using Nano because that's the one I'm familiar with. Initialize the project database with bin xadd. In addition to the public website, your project also has a system administration area. You can use it, for example, to submit jobs, create applications, and do other administrative tasks. You can check all of this is working by going to localhost slash testops in Firefox. You'll need to enter the username and password that you created earlier. The username is BoinkADM. Boink initially sets up your project with some placeholder information 
but you of course can edit it to suit your project. We'll edit the project to INC file so we can change the project name and copyright holder. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of settings in here. You're encouraged to look around and get everything customized later after we've got the basics set up. You can also access the project directory at any time through the file manager if you prefer. Finally, we're going to start the Boink project by going back to the project directory and running bin slash start. Now that we have Boink installed and we have a project set up, let's create an account on the Boink project and create a work unit. To create an account, go to your Boink project website and click join. Next, we'll install the Boink client on the machine so we can download work units and run them. The first command here is going to remove the PPA repository in case you have it installed on your system. You want to use the Boink installer from the official Ubuntu repositories, not the PPA. Due to some current bugs in the Boink package, you'll need to run this command. If you're watching this video more than a year into the future, you probably won't need this anymore, but it does no harm if not needed. Now we open a new terminal tab, cd to our home directory, and run the Boink client. And then, in another terminal tab, we'll run the Boink manager. If you've used Boink before as a credger, this should look quite familiar. Boink is going to ask you to connect to a project. This is where we put in our project address. Important note here is that a.localhost, there's a reason there's an a dot, and it's because Boink requires there to be a dot in the URL. Enter in the email address and password for the account you just created. If you go to View, Advanced View, and then go to the Projects tab, you'll see that the Boink client is now connected to the project. And if you go to the Event Log, you can see that the Boink client is asking for work, but there's no work available. So let's make some work for it. In this demo, we're creating version 1 of an application called Uppercase for the Linux platform. It reads an input file, changes the text to Uppercase, and spits out an output file. This is provided as a demo application for the Boink server software. Of course, you can use any application with Boink. In Firefox, go to your admin area at localhost slash testops. Click on Manage Applications and create an application with the name uppercase and whatever description you'd like to put in. Each application in Boink has input and output templates. These are XML files that describe the app's inputs and output files. They're stored in the project's templates directory. Install the templates for the uppercase app. 
Each app also has a validator, which checks the output files are correct when a point client submits work back to the server, and an assimilator, which processes the output from those work units, for example, by moving them to a directory or submitting them to a database. These are daemons, which mean they run all the time in the background. In this case, we'll use a validator that just accepts all results are correct, and an assimilator that moves the output files to a directory test slash sample results. We'll add the following to our config.xml file in the daemon section. This is not a white space critical file, so if things are a little bit out of alignment here, there's no need for concern. We need to create a directory structure so that Boink understands what version and platform the app is for. Each Boink project can have any number of applications, and each application can have multiple version numbers, 1.0, 2.0, etc., which can support any number of platforms, like Linux or Windows. So we'll do that here with the make dir command. We'll also copy some config files here for this application and create the app version. When you restart the project, you'll see that it picks up these changes. You can ignore the warnings about code signing because we're setting up a test environment. In production usage, it is imperative that you move the code signing key to an offline machine. Point clients will only run code signed by the project's code signing key. Having this key in an offline location ensures that if somebody breaks into your server, they won't be able to distribute malicious jobs to point clients. We'll show you how to set up offline code signing in later parts of this guide series. Typically, in a point project, you're going to have a work generation script that generates all the work units. For example, it may take a list of potential compounds for drug screening and create a job for each compound. But in this example, we're just going to be making a single job. Go to our project directory and create an in file. This is the input file that the application will read and then produce an output file from. Submit the job. We'll print out a job name. We'll need this in a few minutes. In the Boink Manager, in the Project tab, select your project and click Update, and then switch over to the Tasks tab, and you'll see that it downloads this new task we've created and processes it. You'll also see in the Event Log what this looks like on the client side. Once that task is done, back in the terminal, we can run demo query to see the output from that job, and you'll see that the text has been uppercased. Replace the job name here with the one from earlier. Your Boink project has a number of background processes. Each one writes a log file. There's a bunch of different logs. If there's any problem with your Boink server, these are going to be where you want to look for what might be causing those problems. Any errors generated by the PHP web interface will be written to the Apache log directory. So here's where those are located. 